Hey everyone, Mike from Just Watch back with another episode. Today we are going to take a look at this Omega Seamaster Aquaterra. This is the first generation of Seamaster Aquaterra. The model number you are looking for is 2503.50.00. This one first debuted in 2003. This one was actually made in 2010 and it is quite a bit of quite a bit different in many ways from the current generation of Aquaterra. Tell you what, I actually prefer this watch over the current generation in quite a few ways, which I'll get into at the end of this episode. Let me run you through some of the specs. We have a 150 meter water resistant watch, which is awesome. Do not have to worry about water affecting this watch at all. 39.2 millimeters across the case, excluding the crown, of course. 46.9 millimeters lug to lug with the solid end links adding an additional 4.3 millimeters total, bringing it to 51.2. 11.2 millimeters thick and a perfect 20 millimeter lug width. I have to tell you, as far as the sizing goes on this watch, I think it is perfectly proportioned for my 170 millimeter wrist. I'll give you a look at my wrist size in a minute. Running through the case, we have a stainless case, conical bezel, wonderful turned in lugs with really big polished bevels that run the length of the case. They taper at the center point of the case and then extend out wider again. Brushed finish on the case sides, which at first I have to admit I did not love, but it has grown on me immensely because those brushed case sides do not show all the little nicks and scratches that like a Tudor or a Rolex case, size, case side does. We have a screw down crown with Omega signing on there. It is your typical three position crown. First position is hand wind and screw down. Second position is your date set. And third position is your hack. You can see the hack on that movement here, which we'll get into in a second. The crystal is a really nice sapphire crystal. You can see that little bit of an arc to it. it just gives that little bit of distortion. And that to me, between the case shape in the layout on the dial and also that little bit of distortion from that crystal gives the watch kind of a nice vintage charm, which I really appreciate. It's one of the things I really like about this watch a lot. The dial is a glossy black dial with applied faceted indices. It is a flat black date wheel that gives it a nice offset. To me, I like this date wheel as far as this goes. It doesn't dominate the dial and it's, it's very subtle, but you can see it and read it easily. Dauphine and arrow handset. So you have a Dauphine style hours hand with a arrow style minutes and seconds hand. They are really nicely polished, very easy to read. And I really like that minute track going around there. You can see too, you can also see that Omega applied logo with the Seamaster and then the three lines of text underneath 150 meter 500 feet water resistance. Moving on this watch is definitely one of the highlights here. So we have the Omega Seamaster Aquaterra 500 or 2500, not 500. It is based on an ETA 2892 movement. It is COSC certified, adjusted in five positions, beats at 25,200 vibrations per hour. It features 27 joules a free spring balance, and of course the coaxial, which is greatly beneficial to the longevity of the movement. This one is running about six seconds fast per day. Not bad for a 10 year old movement. I don't know if it's ever been serviced. I do not have the service history on this. I'm actually gonna bring it over to my local guy and have him take a look at it. Run you through the bracelet here. As stated, solid center links. Very much like uh, kind of a hybrid between an oyster and a president bracelet. Uh, probably closer to Oyster, but it has this wonderful round shape. You can see those wonderful round shape to each link. It is brushed finished throughout the bracelet, tapering down, and it has a really interesting clasp, which I'm actually a little bit mixed on. Polished on the inside, and it slides to extend to get over your hand, and then just a very simple closure system that looks you know, you don't have that smooth piece. And actually, I think this is a plus too. So it doesn't attract scratches and dings like, you know, that typical uh, clam style bracelet that you see on so many watches. And then just the single deployment trigger right there to open it up. 
Now, what I dislike about the bracelet, I'll show you here. It can be a little tricky sometimes, you know, when you're waking up first thing in the morning and you're a little sleepy, putting it on. You see how that pin isn't wanting to hit that hole? So you have to get it just right to close. And sometimes I actually wind up having to, to push the watch face down against my leg to hold it from rotating around. But really, that is my only um, complaint about the bracelet is just that it can be a little bit difficult to close when you're putting the watch back on. Uh, comparing this to the newest generation, the newest generation of watch, of course, that does have a better movement. It's a significantly upgraded movement with the new series of movements, but it's also just a thicker, beefier watch. You know, the case is thicker. It has these big shoulders now that protect the crown. It has a, uh, doesn't have the conical crown, or it has a conical crown. It doesn't have the cylindrical, cylindrical crown that this has. It is a conical crown shape which I don't like as much either. I really like just the classic clean lines on this watch. Like I said, it has a really nice vintage feel to it. Screw down crown, 150 meter water resistance, just a lot to like. My favorite thing by far about the watch though is just how comfortable it is on the wrist. Let's see if I can close. See, this is what I was talking about as far as it can be difficult to close. So by far the most comfortable watch I've worn on my wrist, it is just wonderful to wear, very flat, very smooth feeling on the wrist, no case back protruding into the, you know, the top of your wrist. And you can see how nice that sits on my wrist there. 170 millimeter wrist size here, just to give you an idea there. So all in all, I think if you're looking for a watch with vintage charm, you want a wonderful Swiss watch, just a great all rounder. I think this generation of Seamaster Aquaterra is a wonderful choice. You can get this watch in number of dial colors. You can get blue, white with blue, white with uh, rose gold, and of course this black. And I think there's a silver dial version of this as well. What changes the designation is that second number. So I think the blue dial is 2503.80, and then I think the white is 2503.40, but don't hold me to that. If you go on to uh, one of the watch database, websites, I'm sure you'll be able to see all the different colors. Anyways, I strongly recommend one of these watches if you're looking for just a great all-rounder. You can still grab these for just over 2,500 US dollars. And to me, I think you're getting a super strong buy. So anyways, that is it. Everybody, thank you again for watching. We'll be back soon with another episode.